So Yolvi 8.1 has just been released. Now we can go in and do our inbound box detection with Ultralytics and Yolvi 8. So this is a brand new model. We're going to take a look at how we can run it in this video here. We're going to go over the documentation, see, talk about like what are our inbounding boxes, why there's a big breakthrough in uptake detection, what it can be used for, and then we're going to see a couple of examples. So let's just jump straight into it and get started. So we're just jumping straight into also latest documentation. Here we see that we have these RE and bounding boxes with the new YOLV 8.1 model because right now YOLV 8 turns one, it has been out for uh, one year. I have multiple different videos here on the channel. Definitely go check that out. See how you can train your own custom YOLV 8 models. You Now you can also go in and train your own optic detection models with oriented bounding boxes, but you can use it for segmentation, tracking, post estimation, classification, optic detection, and so on. I have videos about all of it. So why is this breakthrough in optic detection? And the reason for that is that now we can actually like fit our bounding boxes better around the objects that we're trying to do detections of. So right now, if I just zoom into this image, we can see that this is an image from a data set. So we have these boats here that we want to do optic detection on. Let's say that we're just using traditional bounding boxes. Then we'll just draw like a rectangle around the bounding box. It can't really be rotated. So that will just be a fixed rectangle or square that we're drawing around our object. But now we can actually like rotate it or orient it around our object. So this is a big breakthrough in optic detection. And now we can use it out of the box with Ultralytics, the whole framework around Yolo V8 and so on. These models here are easy to train and also run examples on. So this is pretty cool. We're going to see how we can run inference and then we're going to see some results later on. But I'll just go run it or documentation here. This is the data set that I have trained the new models on. So all of the models, they have pre-trained models available. You don't have to do anything. It's only just a couple of lines of code that you need to write and you have everything up and running as with the previous YOLO V8 model. They also just added this new cool feature, the new Ultralytics Explorer, where you can basically just go in and explore your computer vision data sets. You can do semantic search, SQL queries, vector similarity search, and so on. I also have widgets about that here on the channel where we're using Tinix. But now we can go in and search and basically like try to like fi figure out how your data set works. You can go in and search for, for example, let's say you want to search for taxes or like cars in your data set if you want to fine tune your computer vision data sets because that is really important when we're working with real life applications and also projects. So again, the models are not too important. The data is significantly more important when we're creating models nowadays and also basically just putting them into production. So better data is better than better models. But yeah, this is also a pretty cool feature. We're going to cover this in another video. In this video here, we're just going to cover YOLV 8.1 for oriented bounding boxes. So if we go inside the task here, we can go inside OBB for oriented bounding box object detection. And here we can basically just see the exact same documentation as they have for the detection, segmentation, classification, and also post estimation. So these are all the different tasks that you can do with Ultralytics. And we have videos about all of that here on the channel. They have five different models. Again, they have a nano model, small model, medium model, large model, and extra large model, where we're basically just changing the model size. So then the number of parameters, as you can see over here, you can see some different metrics, both for CPU and also GPU, mean error position test. So these are some pretty good results. If we go further down, we can see how we can train it. These are like single liners that we can use Autolytics for. So import Autolytics or from Autolytics, we import YOLO, create an instance of our YOLO model, and then we can just directly call train, predict, or whatever we want to do, where we want to train our model on a custom data set, fine tune it. We can also train it from scratch, or if you just want to do inference with a pre-trained model. We can specify a number of different parameters. We have covered that in all the previous videos, but here we can basically just see how we can do a prediction. You can copy and paste the code here, throw it into a Python script and just run it. You can throw in different images, videos, URLs, and so on. So we're going to take a look at that in just a second. You can also export it to different formats like ONNX, Torch script, PyTorch, OpenVINO, TensorRT, and so on, if you're going to deploy these into production. So before we're going to jump into the code, I've just found this video on YouTube. We can copy the URL, paste it directly into the predict method, and then we can do inference on this YouTube video directly. You can throw in like a NumPy array, video, specify the path to a video, video stream, webcam, or like whatever. We have covered that in the previous videos. So now we're jumping into the code. So we only need to set up these color lines of code. So from Autolytics, import YOLO. Then we can create an instance of our YOLO model where we just specify YOLO V8 large. You can also use medium, small, or whatever. We're just going to go with large in this example. And then we need to specify OBB for oriented bounding box.pt. If you just want to do traditional object detection, you just delete this part here. You can also do segmentation. So that will be sec and so on. So this is how easy it is to use with Ultralytics. So now we have created an instance of our model. We can now go down and create and do a forward pass, do a prediction with our model that we created an instance of. So this is how we can do it. We can also 
called the predict function. So there's a number of different arguments. You can specify it intersection of union, confidence scores, if you want to show the results, and also if you want to store the results, the device that you want to run the inference on and so on. So right now we're just going to use the CPU. We're going to show it. We're going to set the equal to true. And then we can throw in pretty much like whatever format that we have our data in. Could be video, URL, um, NumPy array, PLL image, and so on. Right now we just have the YouTube video. Let's run the program here and see how it works. So first of all here, I'm just going to activate my Conda environment. After we've done that, let's go in and pip install Autolytics. If you already have it installed, make sure that you upgrade it for getting these new um, functionalities. So we need in pip install Autolytics. And there we go, we can see that my requirements are already satisfied. But once you've done that, you have everything. So this is three lines of code, one pip install, and then you have our in the bounding box update detection up and running. So now we're just going down and run this. So python obb.py. And now we should be able to get the received results directly and we're specified show equal to true. It will download the model automatically as you can see here. If you haven't run this program before, after that it will be stored over here in your directory. So just in a second here, we should be able to see our window, 85.4 million parameters. Now it's going to open up the video stream. We can just see that sometimes we're waiting for a stream because we're pulling this from the YouTube video, but we can see a bunch of different things like how we can extract the results. So this is just a generator that it's returning. You can extract the boxes, mass, probabilities, classes, confidence scores, and all of those things. But right now here, we can basically see we're running this large model and this is running on CPU. So let's try to go down and see if we can see the inference speed. So this is around like 250 milliseconds. So that's around four frames per second that we're extracting now. Let's take a look at the results here. So this is like some drone footage of a traffic intersection. So sometimes we actually get predictions of um, a ship with actually like a pretty high confidence score, um, even though this is actually like a car, but it is also mainly trained on like harbor data. So like ships, containers, and, and those are different kind of things for the pre-trained models. Again, you can go in and fine tune your models. I'm going to create additional videos for that. So how can you take your own data set? How can you label your data set in oriented bounding boxes? And then how can you train your custom model? Here we can see the R in the bounding box when the car here is taking a right turn. So before we will just have the traditional bounding box, the static, square, or rectangle. So now we can see that it is turning and the bounding box is actually like oriented or rotating together with the objects. So now we have bounding boxes. Now we have optic detection that is fitting way better to our data. So this is pretty cool. I'm really excited for this. I'm going to play around with this a lot and we are going to create a bunch of videos here on the channel. So definitely make sure to hit the subscribe button on the video. This is a breakthrough in object detection. It can be used for a lot of different applications and projects. And this is way better compared to just using the traditional object detection. It will basically improve every single object detection project out there. Like there's no reason for not using these oriented bounding boxes. And you saw how easy it is to run with Ultralytics. This is the new v 8.1 model just released. This is pretty cool. We're going to play around with it a lot. Try it out yourself. Try to see if you can come up with some cool projects. I hope to see you guys in one of the upcoming videos. Until then, Happy learning.